you just found the best endless canvas tutorial. Um, so I'm going to run down the tools and teach you how to use it in one session. You're going to know all the tools when you get done watching this video. So we'll start right from the top. There are three squiggly lines here. These are the pencils. And um, I have an iPad with an Apple Pencil. And so I am only able to use this top part of the tool, the bottom part. The pressure sensitivity tool here, which turns it into a brush, doesn't work for the Apple Pencil. So I can't demonstrate that for you. But um, I didn't let it stop me. I, I have done quite a few drawings using just the line width tool at the top. And the pressure sensitivity um, part of it is lovely to have if you've got the tool that works with it, but mine doesn't. So, so you can set up these three uh, squiggly lines or three pencils with different line widths. This top one is at 25 here. The next one down I have set at 14 and the one below that I have set down at four. At any time you can change any of them. Um, it's just, I started using the three tools because as you zoom in and out, the program has a way of adjusting your line tool unexpectedly for you. So having the three option optional line widths at your fingertips is really nice. The next one down is the eraser button. And so that eraser um, has the same capability with width. And I think for right now, I am going to stop with those four and jump down here to the back button. Because as I demonstrate these, um, I also might use the back button. So you've got a back button and a forward button at the very bottom. Um, I am going to, as well, I might as well show you that tool too. So right here, you'll see some little fingers and a little hand with fingers, and you have two options. You can draw with finger or you can move with finger. And so let's go ahead and move with finger and let's move out here actually. Now I'm on a completely blank part of my canvas. I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna hit draw with finger. And I've got, got the brown color selected right now. And so I'm going to, oh, I've got my eraser chosen, not my pencil. Okay, that's gonna change dramatically. There we go. So now we have um, a pencil selected here with the, the widest um, line width. We'll go ahead and choose the next one, which is down at 14. And you'll see it's a thinner line. And then we'll go with the very thinnest down at, well, it's at four. You can go even smaller than that. And so let me show you what happens though as you zoom in. So let's zoom in right here and we can see our three different widths and let's do it again. So I'm on the biggest one here. It looks smaller than that one. So what happens as you move in and out, and I'm gonna go to the next one, which is my 14 line width. And it looks almost smaller than the, the, the four and so these numbers don't mean a lot when you're zooming in and out, which is happening all the time when you're drawing, you're zooming in and out. And those line widths are changing a lot. And very as different than any other vector program that I've used when, as far as when you zoom in and out and how the program will automatically change the width of your lines. And so now I'm going to grab the eraser button and I'm going to erase all of this. Actually, I think I will not erase all of this because now I can teach you about layers. So let's look at what layer are we on. Here is our layers button. We are on the very top layer. So let's say I wanted to, um, I wanted to put a background color behind these. I will go down to a layer below it and let's put a green background below these lines. Oh, and I've got my smallest line chosen. Let's switch and go to our biggest line. There we go. And now I'm putting a green background. It's not going over the top of the brown. It's going behind the brown. And that's because it's on a lower layer. And so that's how layers work. You basically can have layer upon layer, we could go even uh, to a lower layer. Let's go to layer number two, which is right below that. And let's choose a red color. <clears throat> and you can see it's going behind the green. And so it doesn't mean just because you can't see it that it's not there, it is there. And we probably could 
Let's go to our layers. We could probably hide the brown layer. We could hide the green layer. And you'll see what I did with the red layer below it. But I'll go ahead and turn those back on. And we will probably just use the eraser pretty soon. I might just leave that there for now. So what I didn't show you that I want to show you is what is the purpose of this whole program? The whole program purpose is for you to be able to zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. And so we're just going to quickly zoom in and zoom in and zoom some more. And this was all done. This particular drawing was done for a poem. And maybe I will link it in here. Um, it was a poem by Nathan Apollo, and it was the eye color ballad. This one was for, for brown eyes. If you go into YouTube Shorts, you can search through the music and you can find eye color ballad um, is, is a good search term to find it. And you can find several different eye colors that um, Nathan Apollo has done uh, poetry to, musical poetry, kind of rap, kind of kind of spoken word. It's kind of a mix. So next tool, we've got pencils, we've done the eraser, we've got the layers we've showed you, ah, the save button. So let's go, I added some, I added some bookmarks to this. So here is where I started drawing. This origin is given by the program. This is where I started. I started with the face. And the last place I painted was here, which you all witnessed. And then there's the global view, which is not useful to me, I don't think, because it just, it, it, it ends up, um, it will bring everything in that you've drawn, including the X, Y coordinates of the program. So sometimes you, your drawing can feel like it's lost. And if that's the case, just go back to where you started. Just go back and hit origin and it'll bring you back to a place that's familiar to you. And then these below the line, so those three above the line are bookmarks that the program automatically sets up for you. And then below the line are your own bookmarks that you've made. I made this one called Dirt, and we can go there. And I went, I did one called Moon, and we can go there. And then let's go ahead and make one more so you can see how we make a bookmark. So we've done Dirt. Uh, let's do Plant. So I'm going to go to my bookmarks, which is this little um, ribbon button here. And at the very top corner, it says plus. So custom bookmark, I want to rename that. And it doesn't seem to want to recognize my finger right now. Uh, we'll call this plant. Rename. Rename. Okay, so now I've got a plant marker. So I can go to dirt and then say, oh, I want to go to plant. And there we have it. So you can put bookmarks anywhere you want in your entire drawing. So another bookmark, you, you can put it farther in, farther out, wherever you want. And so that's bookmarks. And then colors. Colors are next. Um, there's two color buttons here. And I think it's useful to be able to switch back and forth to have those two color buttons in case, you know, you're working like a lot of times you are working two colors right next to each other. So it's nice to be able to dip into either either one. And um, it's also possible, like this has got the basic mix set up here. Let me see what happens if I go here and I ask for the Derma palette to show up. I wonder if, let me put the brown there. Now, when I open this up, it goes to Derma. It goes to where I left off. Let's go back to this one. That one is also going back to the derma. So it's just two windows into the same thing, it looks like. Um, so you can you can use palettes. You can make your own palette. I made this demo palette here, which it has just a few colors in it. So let's just go ahead and add another color to the demo pal palette. Let's add this blue to the demo. And I can show you another tool while we're trying to do that is we will use the eyedropper to get us to that blue. So here I tap the eyedropper and this circle showed up, and you can move this circle anywhere. So right now I've got an eyedropper on brown, now it's on black, now it's on blue. And notice when you move that, see the blue popped up there, but I'll show you also, you can watch that circle change as I move around the drawing. So there we have it on blue. And so blue is the color I want, and I'm back to where I was gonna show you how to 
add a color to your demo. Right now I've got blue selected. I'm just gonna say add that right there and it added the blue in right there. So again, we could use this to grab the green. Let's grab the green. We've got the green selected. We'll tap on that. We'll go to our demo mix where, I mean, you can name this whatever you want. And I'm gonna hit plus and that's gonna add a green to my demo mix. So um, that's how you make a custom palette. The other way um, that you can uh, find colors or adjust your colors is through these various sliders and watch, um, you can watch this color right here as I move that and that, or you could say, no, I wanna change the brown. I don't wanna change the green. Now we can go here and we can change the brown to more of a purple. So that's another way to do it. Um, then this is the classic slider. Again, I'm on that circle. I can move this down here and then I can move this over here. There's a two, two control on that one. And the same on this disc. On the disc, you're moving around here and you're moving inside of here to get your tints and shades and tones. Okay, so that takes care of our colors and our eyedropper. And then the next one is the home button. And it just basically takes you out to your, your original file, all your different files that you've worked on. So these are each, I'm gonna go back to my home button. These are each individual drawings that, these were demo drawings that the program gave me. These are my own drawings that I've been playing around with in here. So we'll go back to the one called Brown Eyes. And so that's your home button. And then there's a grid button. Um, and I have not figured out how I want to use it, but it has um, a grid on it. And you can make this grid bigger or smaller. You can change the angle of the grid. You can have that grid become dots or stars, zigzags, triangles, circles, diamonds. So I, I'm gonna just use my pencil right now while I've got that grid. Uh, let me go back. Let me do the diamonds. It's on diamonds, sorry, circles. There we go. All right, so now I've got circles and it doesn't really, it's not like it affects anything. It just puts a grid of shapes on there. I can't quite figure out how to use this other than maybe, it's not really a background. It always puts it in the foreground. So I, I find it a mysterious tool that I haven't figured out. If you know how, please leave a comment. Um, if you know how this is useful, uh, please put it in the comments for me so I can learn from you. Okay, so that takes care of the grid. And the way that you turn the grid off is you press the little eyeball and it disappears. And then I showed you already draw with finger or move with finger. And the last thing is the download button. And so we've got um, three different things that you can do. You can export this as an image and it gives you lots of options. And so you're basically taking, you know, separate stills of your, of your overall image. Um, you know, you can zoom out and do whatever, take a picture of whatever you want to take a picture of. And you can do it at whatever aspect ratio that you want. And then, so you would just hit export and you would save it as a PNG, a JPEG or a PDF. I am not going to save this at this moment. I am just gonna hit X. And then um, let's go back to that. The record a video I think is really useful. Record your art is the one that I use. Record how you draw is a, it's a, it, yes, it's a good one, but it doesn't um, condense it. And so you end up with this huge file if you try and record everything that you draw in, in one of these. I don't think it's a terribly useful tool, but it could be. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. It's great that the option is there. I don't use that one. I use the record your art and I will show you how I do that. Um, I will allow it to record my screen. So I'm going to start here and then I am going to move in. I will pause here and there to create some focus. I'm going to move into each drawing. the forest, whoops. So you got a little whoops there that will that is recorded. And then we're gonna move into the coffee cup. And finally, well not finally, we'll move into the autumn leaves. And then finally, 
to the last I. And while I'm here, oh no, I'm not. I'm, in, I'm on record, so I can't use my other tools. I need to go back and erase that line right there. So it's recording the screen, not my hand, of course. You are beautiful is the message. Hooray. So there you have it. And now let's watch it. So it's recording everything. And so you probably want to take this in and edit it. I would take this in and edit this in a different program and, you know, cut out some bits here and there that I didn't really, that weren't smooth or didn't really, um, work with the, the flow. And I think that one's coming up where I, I started to move into the wrong part of the picture and I had, that's it right there. And then I had to move in to the right part of the picture. And then I'm a little off, off, off the top and bottom. There we go. And there's our leaf. And then I think it's pretty good here. I thought about cleaning up that mark. Couldn't do it because I was in the zoom or the record instead of being able to use my other tools and we're coming to the end here any second and there's the end so you see how great that is as a, a tool a screen record it's really easy so simple and i'm not going to save that because i have saved that already um, it will go to your your photo file when you save it you just find it in your photos so um, that is the download button and then the last two buttons are the back button and the forward button, which I think you saw me use earlier. Um, so basically if I do a pencil mark and whoopsie, I have to use my pencil because I'm moving with my finger. So I'm gonna do a pencil mark, come here, and we'll do a nice bright blue so you can see it. Make sure we're on a layer that we can see. Here you are beautiful up on layer four is where we wanna be. Layer two is what I just did it on, and it's it's actually in there, but it's buried underneath. Let me do it on layer four. Hello. And then I will go ahead and hit the back button, and it all goes away. Okay, so that covers it. You have learned everything there is to learn about this tool that I can offer. If you know something that I have missed, please leave your knowledge in the comments so everybody can learn together. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.